Welcome back, Proppers. Today's project will be the katana, or the samurai sword. I'll be using templates from Epic Cardboard Props. Some parts I'll be following very closely, and others very loosely, to add my own personal flair. And as usual, the project starts by cutting out the individual template pieces. This is the second part of my full samurai build. So make sure you stay tuned, press that like button, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell notification so you'll be notified when all the new videos are uploaded. The template pieces are pre-attached, then cut out as a single unit on the cardboard. My original plans was to carve out the katana from a single piece of wood, which would have made the project much simpler. But I didn't have the proper wood in stock for this project, and I had plenty of cardboard, so I decided to bite the bullet and take the longer and more complicated route. After two pieces of the main body are cut out and attached together, I start on the template pieces that'll give shape and definition to the handle. All of these pieces are cut out in duplicate to be attached to each side of the handle. After all of the handle pieces are properly attached with hot glue, I start on the pieces that'll give shape and definition to the blade section. These pieces are also cut out in duplicate to be attached to both sides of the blade. There are registration marks on the temple that need to be scored with the X-Acto knife to give the blade proper angle and deflection. After all of the pieces are cut and hand formed, they are attached to the blade with hot glue, pinching in the sharp section of the blade as close as possible. To stiffen the spine of the blade, a thin strip of wood is glued to the top with an inch or two of the wood strip going into the handle. This will be covered from sight by the outer sections of the blade. When gluing in the outer sections of the blade, remember to pinch in the sharp section as much as possible. To get templates and more detailed instructions, go to Epic Cardboard Props channel. After finishing the outer section of the blade, I found a thin strip of aluminum and I decided to use it to further stiffen up the spine of the blade. It was attached with hot glue, then squeezed into the corrugations of the cardboard. Just be very careful because the metal easily transmit the heat from the hot glue. The entire blade will be skinned with modeling paste, but I'll start with just the handle and let that dry up before I get to the blade. Not that I have much choice in the matter, since this container is running low and I'm waiting on the next delivery. I've had limited experience using this product, and I found out during this build that you really want to get this as smooth as possible. It dries extremely hard, and it's not very easy to sand. It's probably better to be very patient and apply it in several very thin layers. As you can see here, I went for the one-shot thick coat. Luckily, I was smart enough to utilize a wet sponge to smooth it down a little before it dried. After the paste had properly set, I utilize a damp sanding sponge to smooth it down as much as possible. I set the sword aside to dry, then I got started on creating the display stand. I'll be using 3 quarter inch ply. The base will be 10 by 6, and the sword holders will be 3 and a half by 4. 
I'm angle cutting the corners of the base to add a little more detail. After marking out the slots that hold the sword on the display stand, I cut them out with my bandsaw. My wind bandsaw works absolutely smooth when it has a new blade in it, but when the blade gets old, it gets absolutely wonky. After the final trimming of the sword holder, I added curvature on the sides for detailing. That curved detail is now fine-tuned with my sander. Here I'm going for a pagoda-style look. The pencil mark and blemish is also sanded down. And finally, a quarter round is added to the edges with my router. The same edge rounding is done to the top of the base plate. The base plate is then assembled using wood glue and screws. And as close as always, I go overboard making sure everything is centered. Pilot holes are drilled through the base plate for the screws. These are brand new Dewalt drill bits and they're falling apart. I may be paranoid, but since COVID, I believe that manufacturers have been taken an I don't care type attitude. The holes are then countersunk in the bottom of the base.
With the base completed, I start skinning the blade with modeling paste. The blade is set aside to be dried completely before the final sanding. After the final sanding, the entire katana gets one coat of black plasti dip, then the blade is painted silver and the handle red oxide. The handle is wrapped with a self-adhesive vinyl material. The material is stretched out to get it as smooth as possible. Slots are cut out on the sides of the handle and a 2 inch piece of material is wrapped around the hilt of the blade. To create the blade guard, three 4 inch circles are cut out of cardboard. A triangular slot is cut out of the center of the circles to accommodate the blade, then decorative holes are cut around the entire circumference. After the holes are cut out of all three circles, they are attached together with wood glue. Being very careful to make sure that all the holes line up. The guard is then painted black and slid onto the sword all the way up to the hilt. The cardboard templates that you see on the table were the original design for the sheath, but I decided to go back to my one-piece method. After joining two pieces of non-corrugated cardboard with contact cement, I used the sword to mark out the shape and size of the sheath. The cardboard was scored to make it easier to bend it into shape. To make sure that the sword fit and that I wouldn't have to go over this process again, I cut the sheath a little larger than necessary at first. The edges of the sheave were contact cemented together, then checked for size. The sheave is then covered with brown paper using contact cement. The excess brown paper was trimmed off and then the sheave was also covered with the self-adhesive vinyl material.
The material was applied so that the edges would be at the very smallest point of the sheath. And then the excess material was cut off. I must admit that the sheath is a little larger than I really want it to be, but I was concentrating more on a proper fit for the sword. The handle of the sword was taped up so I could spray paint the cutout design. A thin strip of the vinyl material was cut off to cover the opening of the sheath. Another strip of that same vinyl, painted gold, was used to cover the base of the sword. A two inch piece of vinyl was wrapped around a strip of cardboard. It was measured and cut for size, then it was painted gold and wrapped around the handle behind the guard. The same process was used for the opening of the sheath. Small strips of vinyl painted gold were used to cover the seams. After applying a base coat of black and a misting of red oxide, gold paint was used to highlight the edges of the display stand. The blade guard was accented with red oxide as well as cadmium red acrylic paint.
I wasn't happy with seeing the corrugation of the cardboard on the edge of the blade guard, so I covered it with a thin bead of foam plate. I wanted to put a cap on the back of the handle, so I used Reynolds Wrap to create a template. The floor was covered with gray tape, so it would keep its structure when I cut and flattened out the template. After establishing the template, I cut the piece out of 4mm EVA foam. I guess for all future caps, all I have to do is make an iron cross. Super glue was used to connect the seams. For detail, I attached two small strips of 2mm EVA foam to the edge of the cap. The cap was then trimmed down to size and given one coat of black Plasti Dip. I used some cadmium red acrylic paint to add a little more detail to the stand. I call this design Rivers of Blood. I'll be using Epic Cardboard Props technique of using foil duct tape to create the blade's edge. The foil is first dulled with sandpaper, then a wavy edge is cut on both sides. After the backing tape is removed, the tape is centered and applied to the sharp edge of the sword. The gold cap is then attached to the back of the handle with hot glue. I adjusted my paint job on the sword sheath to make it appear a little slimmer. The last portion of this project is to create a rope design on the sheath. It won't be a traditional rope design because I have this yellow and white rope that I plan on using on the helmet and I wanted something that will correspond with it on the sheath. This rope is too thick to make the traditional butterfly rope design. Instead of attaching the external outlet to the top of the sheath, I decided to cut some notches out and pull up a loop section of material. 
After fishing a small section of rope through the homemade eyelet, I glued the ends together, then secured it with black tape. The tape was then rotated to the inside of the outlet toward the back of the sheath. This made the black tape less unsightly. I needed two short sections of rope to create the design on the side of the sheath. I used crazy glue to pre-seal the rope before the cut. I mirrored the design in two sections of the rope, connected it with contact cement, and then sealed it with instant glue. The designs were then attached to each side of the sheath with instant glue. This marks the end of part two of my full samurai build. Stay tuned for the next section, which should be the helmet. And as always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel, and press that bell notification so you'll be notified when future videos are uploaded.